you know how sometimes you're listening to this song? Titled, in the end, Sunday 21st October 2007. Guys, do you know how sometimes you're listening to this song, and though you didn't design the lyrics, it seems like it was written by you or for you? When the meaning of the song or the lyrics are just so right for how you feel, that a shiver runs down your spine and your scalp tingles with recognition. When you get goosebumps and your eyes just go far away, and you just gained a bit of understanding about yourself. Yeah, cringe trigger warning. I wrote this a long time ago. <laughs> I think it's moments like those that make life worth living. The greatest moments in my life are not when I won the World Cyber Games, Grub Smug, or when I signed my first contract, or when I graduated from school. These are all joyful moments, but they do not measure up to the inexplicably pleasing little things. Three Chinese fanatics watching me play and enjoying every hero surround I pull off. Watching me with a reckless abandon, screaming out with joy at intervals. Suddenly, I'm an entertainer. My scalp tingles. A word or a look from Cassandra ju that just makes my heart melt. She doesn't even know she's doing it. And I won't tell her out of fear that she'll start getting self-conscious saying that word. My heart melts. Rally pointing my peon to the wood so fast. My fingers dancing over the keyboard and my mouse faster than I can consciously follow. Like, oh my god, what is going on here? A sign that playing a lot is paying off with speed. If only I could play every official match like this when I'm in the zone. I beat a Russian player in Warcraft 3. And he repays me in kind by flaming me for a good 10 minutes until I decide to move on. I couldn't snap out of just staring at my screen with a weird kind of satisfaction as he insulted me in every way he could with his limited use of English. My head starts tingling because in some weird and funny way I find it terribly cute that he wastes so much time trying to get me on my nerves. It just won't work and it remains terribly funny to me anyhow. That was not happy guys. <laughs> Cassandra and me got this song hanging by a moment from Lifehouse. She originally sent me the song over MSN, saying that she always thought about me when she heard it. I accepted the song, and like I accepted so many other songs that she sent me, it was like giving me a nice selection of songs which I enjoyed listening to. Until at some point I was carrying the song around me, together with many others on my MP3 player. I remember well that I was coming from a train and I was heading home from one of my tournaments, and as the song came by, I'm sure I didn't remember how I got the song, but when I heard it, I thought of Cassandra, and I was so touched by how it seemed to reflect the lyrics of it, the memories of us together. I told her, and I was caught off guard when she told me it was her that sent the song to me in the first place, and it held the same meaning. So it became our song. I'm at IEST now, where I flew out of the tourney on the first day, and I've been practicing ever since in order to prepare for the clan war versus Noah. No idea. It's a long shot, but we're not gonna give up without a fight. We know what we need to do. Can't say anything more. Just now, most of the players left to go clubbing. I'm not that kind of guy, so I'm remaining behind. <laughs> That's so typical. I'm just practicing in the hotel. <laughs> Zeus is sick with some food poisoning, so he's upstairs in his room. I was alone here. Cassandra had been in Singapore for a few days, so I decided to put on some music. In comes In The End from Linkin Park. It's a great song, it's a great song, but especially now, I felt it held such meaning for me. Indulge me, and walk with me through my interpretation of the meaning of this song for me. It starts with one thing, I don't know why, it doesn't even matter how hard you try, keep that in mind, I designed this rhyme to explain in due time. All I know, time is a valuable thing, watch if I buy as the business. <laughs> Well, you guys know the lyrics, and then when you get to this part, when it goes bold, I kept everything inside, and even though I tried, it all fell apart. What it meant to me will eventually be a memory of a time when I tried so hard and got so far. But in the end, it doesn't even matter. I had to fall to lose it all, but in the end, it doesn't even matter. So... Such a classic for me because 2007 is the only year that I didn't win a major tournament. 
I think that's what I think that's what the fall is, where I lost it all. And I wrote this before WCG 2008, but I think this is the beginning of it. Yeah, this is like end of 2K7. Soon after, in January, I started dreaming about winning WCG again in 2008, 10 months before the tournament. I dreamed about it all year long. And I don't just mean like I visualize it and I dream about it like daydreaming. I literally dreamed about winning that tournament dozens of times when I was awake and when I was asleep. So I, I did think that I kind of reached mental rock bottom with my performance in Warcraft in 2K7 to the point where like this made a lot of sense to me and I ended up winning the tourney. Yeah, it's, it's quite an emo post, but you know, I was like 21. Mentally, I think more like 18 or 15. I kept everything inside me. I wasn't complaining. Orc will get a break someday. I felt like Orc was uh, very weak, but I tried to never complain about Imba. What it meant to me, a strong mindset only goes with a firm resolve. Mm, to hang by a thread of that which you believe will happen. Orc's just in a tough spot. It's now part of a memory of a time whereby I was struggling against the tide. Night Elf and freaking Talons. I tried so hard and got not far. In the end, it didn't matter, and all the practice couldn't avail. I had to fall lose it, to lose it all. WCG, ISC, it didn't even matter how hard I tried. Hmm. Oh my god, what a long post! What is this? Things aren't the way they used to be. So Human Elf has been dominating all tournaments. Each orc map is being systematically removed. Is there, I ask you, a reason that Secret Valley, Lost Temple, Maelstrom, and Norwood are being dropped by many tournament organizations? Because they're Imba and good for Orc? What about Turtle Rock? It's never been good for Orc. Ternus Stand has been good against Undead for a couple of months. Always bad, never been good against Human and Elf. Twisted Meadows is still there. It's a good map for Orc against Human only. Or so they said. But Militia Creeping has something to say about that. Because they can get XP to on Twisted Meadows and be level 3. Echo Isles, decent map, I guess. Why have these maps stood the test of time for more than four years and all the other good orc maps are being removed? If you knew me, you knew I've never limited myself to one race. I was once orc. Dryad Bear drove me to explore the possibilities of Night Elf and more importantly, abandon orc. I once was elf and then I decided a human was going to win WCG 2003 for sure because it was, a, it was in Reign of Chaos. I wanted to be that human and I got closer than I ever could have with Night Elf. I once was human until I decided TFT offered new possibilities to the orcish race. My first love and I solidified my presence in the scene with orc. Many players see switching race as a weakness. I allow you your beliefs without passing judgment. Uh, no, that's bullshit. That's bullshit. I greatly disrespect people that believe that. But, you know, front-facing. Uh, sure, you know, everyone their own opinion. But anyway, I see the choice of switching race as a strength. One that inspires creativity. Offers enjoyment, stimulates new thought processes, keeps opponents off balance, and can create chance where before you saw only defeat. You cannot convince me that changing race is a weakness. Sticking with a strategy or a race where you know it leads to defeat, that's a weakness. Now it all comes back to me, and I wonder if I shall take a look on the other side. Song goes on. I put my trust in Orc, and I've pushed as far as I can go. For all this, there's only one thing you should know. Hey, that sounds familiar. Until a patch comes along, and Blizzard remembers this godforsaken game, forget the identity that you have come to associate with me. Oh yeah, I was thinking about race switching. That's what this was leading up to. I thought I was going to go home and like switch race because Blizzard forsaken us. I am an entertainer, but I am also an individual. The choices that I make ultimately affect myself the most. Damn. This is, this is actually kind of deep. This, this is very philosophical. In the end, it doesn't even matter whether I win or lose. As long as I enjoy the game and I make choices that feel right to me, to live with no regrets is the greatest joy you can feel. You die alone with the choices that you have made. Allow me mine. Shout out to my love, Cassandra, who makes life worth living for me. 
I was never truly happy before. Such is the complete feeling and fulfillment that I have come to know. To all my fans and haters, I love you both, yin and yang, positive and negative. And the balance in between, you somehow make up this community all together, a community where people like us find a place. In this community, you can meet someone in real life for the first time and feel like you've been lifelong friends. You find people who are like yourself and people who are so different from you that getting to know them is an adventure in itself. I wish everyone to have a life as lucky as mine, Manuel. I never signed with my real name normally. I guess I felt quite real. Read more blogs by this author. Well, it, it, it ended quite well, I must say. 